the first training video for um, CS4. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to start off by just learning the user interface for Premiere Pro. So, if you're pretty confident with this, then just skip to the next, obviously, and so on and so forth. Now, when you load up Adobe Premiere Pro, you're going to get this welcome dialog box. So, what you want to do is, if it's your first time, then you want to press new project. If you've got an older project that you want to open, then obviously you might be in the recent, or you can open it and find it yourself. So we're going to click new project, and then it's going to give you these options. So what do these mean? Well, basically, if you're using a DV camcorder or a HDV camera, then set it to HDV. If you're using a built-in webcam, then choose QuickTime. And then obviously most other sources just copy from that disk to your hard drive and they can be imported later. You don't want to mess with this unless you're working with film, which I assume you're not because no one works with film really. Okay. Um, then you want to choose a, um, lo a, a save location. I'm going to go browse. I'm going to save it to my desktop training. Choose. And you're going to name your project. I'm going to call it part one. Okay. Now hit enter to go continue to the next page. It's going to ask you what settings do you want for your sequence. Now basically, if you're in the PAL region, then you want to choose either widescreen 48 kilohertz, or if you're not widescreen, then standard 48 kilohertz. And the same for NTSC. And if you're working to get a more filmic effect, then you can choose 24p, but I would not. I would choose a setting that matches your camera. If you don't know what settings you need, post a comment saying what camera you have, and I can tell you. If you're working in HDV or HD, then you can choose any of these. The difference between I and P um, is that I updates the screen it interlace so you're going to be getting the top of one frame and the bottom of a previous frame so it updates watch my mouse that's how it's going to update like that zigzagging down whereas if you have a um, progressive scan it's going to be a full image every time then we can name the sequence I'm going to call it practice and hit enter oh it hasn't let me do that because I haven't chosen a thing I'm going to choose widescreen PAL 48 kilohertz because that's what I am working with. Hit OK. Okay, so it's going to, your space is going to look something like this. It may not look exactly like this, you may have different active windows, but this is the rough idea of what you're going to see. Okay, so what does all this mean? I mean, if like, you're going to get this, I'm pretty sure. Um, so what does this mean? If you've never used a non-linear editor, if you've only used Movie Maker or GarageBand, then this could be a little bit daunting. Sorry, did I say GarageBand? I meant iMovie. So we're going to start off by learning these panels. First of all, you've got your project panel. This is where you, all your clips, your audio files, and your pictures, they're all going to be in here, and then you can drag and drop them into the timeline. Now this is the timeline where you can arrange all your clips, edit and cut them up, but we're going to be learning about that later. Also up here we've got the effects controls. When you add an effect to a clip you can get all the parameters and controls over it in here. To add an effect come down to the effect panel and you can choose them. They're all organized into folders and subfolders so they're really easy to find. Also down here you've got history, so you can delete some stuff that you did in the past. You've got info on a currently selected clip and also on your sequence. And the media browser is really good because it means you never have to leave the editing program to go and find some clips. And then obviously it works the same as Finder or Windows Explorer, you can just navigate and find your clips. Up here we've got the audio mixer. If you want to make something go, um, sorry, these spinners are for stereo control. So say you wanted to make this track, which if you see, they all correspond to their native track. Audio 2, Audio 2, Audio 3, Audio 3, Master and Master, etc, etc. If you wanted Audio 2 to all be on the right speaker, then you could spin that round and the left, the other side, obviously.
Yeah, nearly. One sec. Sorry about that. Okay. Source clip. Basically, what that is, say I had a video clip or any type of file in here, I could double click it, it will load up in the source, and I could scrub through it, see what clip it is, and also um, shorten the clip. Metadata is going to tell you all the information about clips you've imported, and when you playback files, they're going to play through here. Um, just briefly, docking panels, if you um, drag a panel you can move it so if I were to I'm dragging hold of the metadata if I bring it down to here it's then going to dock it here I could right click undock panel and then I can dock it again back up here and if you mess around you'll get used to the, how it all works in no time okay well that's the end of part one like I said it was very basic if you look I've now got all my files down here so they're really easy to find and I could just browse through like that. Very easy. Okay, well, that's the end of part one. Like I said, next time I'll be importing some clips. And if you're like me, I learned by doing stuff. So part two will definitely be the one for you um, if you found this a little slow. Or if I went through it a bit fast for you, um, I have to abide by the 10 minute rule on YouTube. So if I went through a bit fast, then just um, go back, watch it, pause it, have a go yourself play an expert, pause it, have a go yourself and I'll get back to you and there's still so much to learn about this user inf interface I mean what does it all mean but we're going to learn over time because that is the best way if I told you how everything in the user interface worked in just this video you'd be giving up before you tried honestly okay well thank you very much for watching make sure you watch the next one subscribe and rate and I'll see you next time I don't know how to stop recording how do I do this? Oh, there we go. Magic.